Hey, Superdell here with the simple dummy down version of why gliders they call reflex are death traps. And this is the for dummies version to try and make it so simple that even if you know zero about the sport or paragliding anything, all you have to do is have an IQ of 80 today, okay? So today, everyone with an IQ above 80 will realize while hoax lacks death traps are in fact death traps. Okay, we're gonna make this very simple. Let's think about a balloon, okay? A balloon, long and skinny, okay? Long skinny balloon. How hard is it to bend, okay? Long skinny balloon. Now let's say you had a big fat balloon this long, okay? How hard is that to bend? Very, very difficult compared to skinny balloon. Now, did you have to fly the balloon to know which is more stable? Did you actually have to measure the balloon to know which is more stable? Or can you use even an 80 IQ to determine that the long and skinny balloon is not gonna be as rigid and stable as the bigger fat? Okay, let's say you wanna drive your truck across the bridge. Do you want the bridge to have little skinny pipes holding it up? Or do you want big fat pipes holding up the bridge? Just think for a second. Do you have to test the bridge? Do you have to understand geometry and have a PhD in bridges to understand by taking one look, a bridge held up by pipes this big versus a bridge held up by pipes this big. Let's say you're gonna drive across that bridge and you drive up and you look at the bridge and the bridge has pipes this big. This has actually happened to me in Thailand, driving down a, on a motorcycle. And the motorcycle's, shoot, 450, 475 pounds. And I come to a bridge and the bridge is held up with little pipes. Now, do I have to drive the bike across the bridge to know that the bridge is not gonna support that weight? Or can I use even something above an IQ of 80 to realize that pipes this big around are gonna hold more weight than pipes this big around. Okay, that makes perfect sense, right? We're, you're following me, all right? Okay, now let's take a look at the simple facts of a hoax flex death trap, like the uh, ozone free ride. Okay, ozone free ride, okay, follow along has a 5.5 to 1 aspect ratio. Okay, what's aspect ratio? That's the span versus the core, okay? So it's gonna be 5.5 times wider than it is deep. Let's use normal, like, for dummy terms, okay? So our pipe is 500, but that's standard. When you put it in hoax flex death mode, that doubles because you're unloading the back half of the glider. So we gotta chop that half off. Okay, so 11 to one aspect ratio. So now we have our pipe that's really long and skinny cause it's 11 times farther this way than it is this way around, got it? 11 times this way versus this way. Okay, the dominator has a 4.7 to one aspect ratio. So it's the big pipe that's this wide, okay? Which is stronger, which is more stable? Think about it, okay? Now, do you have to test this one? Oh, you don't know anything, you haven't flown it. Dude, you can have an IQ above 80 to realize an 11 to one aspect ratio ain't gonna work, okay? You don't have to have a PhD in bridge building and engineering to know that the little pipe this big ain't gonna support the semi-tractor trailer. Are you following along or am I speaking too fast for you? Okay, so let's follow along again. Okay, think about it. You got a balloon, 11 to one aspect ratio. Okay, so it's the long skinny balloon. How hard is it to bend and what up? And if it pops and deflates, woo, you got this big long skinny thing where at least the bigger one is more likely to stay stable. Does that make sense? 
I mean, seriously, do you need to know anything about gliders other than the size? Now, let's talk about the, uh, the profile, the actual, uh, the, uh, uh, the depth or thickness, the thickness, we'll call it. Just keep it nice and simple. The thickness of the wing. Okay. In an eight meter span, so an eight meter wide free ride, they have 56 cell openings. Very small cell openings, okay? Dominator, in an eight meter wide span, has only 42 cell openings. Much bigger, huge, wide, okay? Very, very thick glider, okay? Big, thick, safe, stable. Now think about it. You got a pipe this big around versus a pipe this big around. Okay, which one do you want to drive your truck across? All right, if you're driving in Thailand on your 500 pound motorcycle and you come to a bridge held up with pipes this big around, are you going to drive across the bridge just to pretend that, oh, I have experience because I've done it? Are you going to die? Well, if you do, you're the guy that has less than the 80 IQ because you're stupider than a stump. You're dumber than the bridge. Okay, you should know that something this big around, whoop, is not gonna be as strong as something this big around. So you've got a thick dominator, this big around, okay, 4.47 to one aspect ratio versus 11 to one aspect ratio. Now, do you have to know anything else about the sport to understand which one's more stable? Now, let's take all the people with above an IQ of 80. Now think about the morality and intelligence level of the people out there saying that the long and skinny is way more stable. Oh yeah, this is way more stable. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, these people, A, have an IQ below 80, or B, they're freaking evil because they know reality and truth and they do have IQs above 80. They're just so freaking evil, they don't give a crap if you freaking die after they get your money. So hopefully we have dummied this down to make this simple, okay? Because they're gonna try and throw in all these fancy terms and the Bernoulli principle and oh, we got this reflex profile and blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's say we have a pipe this big versus a pipe this big and we blow on it. Okay, now which one are you gonna drive across? Wait, let's blow through it. Now which one are you gonna drive across? Hello? Okay, now let's take another one. Just keep it nice and simple. Remember, 42 cells in a span of eight square meters versus 56 cells. So the dominator's much, much deeper. It's the big round pipe, big round huge pipe, okay? Versus little skinny pipe, okay? Which one's more stable? Now think about the cell openings. You're going 30 miles an hour. Which one's gonna have more pressure pushing with the big cell openings or the little cell openings? Which one do you think's gonna be more stable? Hmm. Don't have to know anything about the sport. Don't have to know anything about certifications or safety or the facts that these death traps can't pass any level of safety certifications. And the guy who tried to do some safety tests actually died. You don't have to know that. All you have to think about is cell openings this big with Ram Air. Which one's gonna give you more pressure than cell openings this big? 56 cells, 42 cells, okay? One is thick. One is what we call low profile. Low profile. It's the skinny pipe. Okay, now let's simplify it. Now put those together. Big cell openings, okay? Big, fat, short, stubby pipe versus long, skinny pipe. Tiny little cell openings. Which one's more stable? Which one are you going to trust your life to in the air? If you're flying a glider they call reflex, you either have below an 80 IQ 
or you're just a freaking idiot, or <laughs> you're totally ignorant because the freaking evil people totally lied to you and defrauded you in every way, telling you every lie they can make up. Oh, this is the new technology, blah, blah. Okay, let's say you have a pipe from the 1960s that's this big around, and you have the same metal pipe this big around from the year 2023. It's new technology, even though it's made of the same material. Which one would you want to drive your truck across? The new technology that's, yeah, long and skinny, because that's better, right? It's new technology, huh? Yeah, that's more stable. Oh, yeah, who, yeah, we don't need pipes this big, man. New technology, this big around. Oh, they're made with the same material? Oh, we have less pressure because the cell openings are smaller because it's low profile? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's new technology. It's more stable, dude. New technology. It's technologically advanced with the same material. It's a piece of cloth and string held open by air. So which do you think is more stable? Because this one is blown, ooh. Well, we've got the, ooh, we got the reflex because we like do this and we do that and we just unload the back half of the glider. Who needs the back half anyway? Because we don't need a pipe this big around to create stability. We got stability off this little pipe and this is so much more stable to drive your truck across. See. You really don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand why reflex, all of them are death traps and there is no reflex, but that's a whole nother story. Okay, reflex is when the trailing edge actually stabilizes the leading edge. Well, that's another one. Yeah, we could talk about that, okay? Let's say, here we go. Here's our little reflex profile. Yeah, bingo, 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 boy. Little paper airplane, okay? We got an aileron back here pressing up. So if the glider tries to dive, it's automatically being pulled up, right? Boop, like a hang glider. They have little metal battens that curve up in the back, very specifically, so if you get in a dive, it'll automatically pull out. That's reflex. It's got metal battens in a hang glider. Every hang glider has them, because lots of people died before they had that because if it got in a dive, there's nothing to make it recover, and so it would just stay in the dive and you'd die. But now all hang gliders have little metal battens that curl up in the back, so if you get in a dive, the airspeed, poof, pushes down in the back, raises the front, and it automatically pulls out of the dive. That's reflex. So with paraglider, you could just push on the string, and the string pushes up on the, oh yeah, you can't push a string, huh? So how do you push a string on this side and make that side come up? There is no reflex to a paraglider. It's cloth and string. So you gotta talk about pipes. Size of the pipe, bigger, yeah. Deeper, depth, width, yeah, thick. You got a big thick profile? That's gonna be more stable and more rigid than the low profile with the little cell openings. Am I going too fast for you? So for all of those people, push and reflex. See, there's a big difference between stupid, ignorant, and evil, okay? Stupid people, they don't really know what's going on because they're just stupid. Ignorant people might be really smart, but they can totally understand what I'm saying. Even with no knowledge, they're very smart because a wise man once said, see, that a, uh, a very knowledgeable man has the keys to open many doors, but a man of great wisdom can open many doors without keys. Okay. Yeah, I came up with that one. Okay, so, wise man, hey, what can you say? I have better than genius level IQ. That doesn't mean you need a genius level IQ to understand that a thick pipe is gonna be stronger and stiffer than the thin little skinny pipe, okay? That it's like, it's simple logic. You don't have to know anything about the sport. So we got stupid people, we got ignorant people, and then we got evil people. Evil people hate the truth. Those are the ones that sell gliders that they call reflex. They bash, trash, lie, make up every lie, pretend I kill people, totally false, complete blatant lies. 
And every lie they can come up with to try and discredit the truth and deceive you away from the fact that the thicker pipe is going to hold more weight than the thinner pipe and be more stable. I mean, how can it be any more obvious? Yes, I understand my IQ is above genius level, so I may be a little bit smarter than some people out there. But I'm nowhere near as smart as God. And if you ask God, he'll back up what I'm saying, because this is pretty simple, obvious, logical stuff. You don't need to die. So, why in the world would someone that's not stupid say that a hoax lex death trap is more stable? Are they ignorant? Or are they freaking evil and don't care what the truth is or hate the truth? It's like, that's messed up. They're pushing these gliders that are totally deadly. And with death after death, I mean hundreds of deaths. Dean, Chris, Ben, Adelson, Julius, Jeff, another Jeff. And then there, dude, it goes on. I mean, I could, you could list. I, I tried to memorize at least 12 a dozen names. You know, Lydia and all these other people that have died on hoax flex death traps. And the lies you know, are all the same just absurdly stupid lies. Now, these are kind of stupid because they're past ignorant. Because, you know, if you had an intelligent person, they could come up with something at least a plausible lie. But saying new technology on a cloth pipe this big around is more stable than old technology cloth this big, yeah, it's not technology. That's just false. <laughs> it's it's dumb. It makes no rational sense whatsoever. Like cell openings. You got these little holes, you know, versus big holes that are going to allow, yeah, yeah. Max Ram Air, because it's a Ram Air canopy. The pressure is made by Ram Air, the air ramming into the canopy. So the big cell opening going to create, yeah, more pressure inside. Yeah. It, it makes it pretty simple. Okay. Anyway. You got these people pushing these death traps, people dying over and over. I just posted a video of a guy dying. You can see clear as can be what happens when you got a long skinny pipe that's held open by air and it depressurizes. And it wads up and the glider just falls right to the ground to this death. Boom. Dead. Over and over and over and over. Now the lies they use, they pretend it's new technology as though they're a piece of cloth that's the same piece of cloth somehow magically becomes more stable because they said it's technology. Lie. Then they use things uh, and say, uh, there's so many lies. Ah, oh, oh my goodness. The lies are like endless. Look at the comments on some of the videos and how much trash they talk. And then they claim, oh, the Dominator's not certified. Yeah, it is. You can just look it up. Oh. I mean, it's like... Come up with a lie that's like, you know, at least difficult to, you know, like confuse people with. This is very simple stuff. Don't fall for the lies, okay? Friends don't let friends get caught dead on hoax flex death traps. There is no reflex in a paraglider. There is no automatic stability. And a little tiny pipe is not more stable than a big giant one with big cell opening. Okay? If it were, they would be happy to come fly in the mountains in the middle of the day in 100 degree temperatures. But no! They're scared to fly at all! Oh my gosh, the wind's blowing! Oh my gosh, it's... Oh, you can't fly past 9 a.m. You could have turbulence! Ah! Yeah, people fly in the little tiny pipe. They should be very scared of turbulence. Woo, 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 woo. That's like flying a saw blade. Woo, 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 woo. Make all kinds of weird noises as it falls to your death. And do you really need to die to know that what I'm saying makes perfect logical sense? I mean, seriously, how do you refute that? I, I'm, I, you can't. <laughs> I mean, it's so obvious and simple and logical. You don't have to know anything about paragliding to understand aspect ratio, 11 to 1 aspect ratio, deadly, cell openings, how big are the cell openings, stability, size, yes, how fat is your glider, how thick 
What's the span? I mean, you do the math of how big this bridge is and you can tell whether you want to drive over it with a truck or if you would be scared to death to, you know, have a bird fart on it because it could knock you out of the sky. Now look at the people dying. Look at the last guy dying. You watch a paraglider in turbulence, okay? The, like when I set the world distance record at 280 miles, it was freaking butt wild. I'm like, well, bam, my glider's over there. Wham, glider's behind me. Woo, glider's in front of me. I can literally see the ground looking over the back of my glider. Well, bam, and whoop, boop, wham, glider's all over. That's what turbulence looks like, okay? If you go fly and just nuke and crazy active over 100 degree temperatures flying through the desert in the middle of the day, you're gonna have some active thermics. I didn't take a single collapse, okay? There's a big difference. If I flew a hoax flex death trap glider, I would be dead. It'd be that simple. So real pilots can fly in real conditions. That's why 100% of paraglider pilots fly real gliders and zero of them fly hoax flex death traps. So do I have to fly a flare moustache to know that a little skinny pipe is not stable like a big thick pipe? No, I don't. All I have to do is impart a little bit of logic and reasoning and go, hey, if you have an IQ above 80, you probably don't want to fly that glider at all because it would be like trying to drive your truck across the bridge held up by one two by four. Now, would you drive your truck across the railroad tie or a two by four? Let's say you want to load your truck up onto a bench. Are you going to use a two by four do you think a two by four sideways, flat ways, so it's only this wide, that thick. Yeah, it's that thick. Are you gonna drive a truck over that two by four? Or do you wanna use a freaking railroad tie? Yeah, the railroad tie. Now, have you ever tried it? Oh, you don't know a railroad tie will support a load of a truck. Do you have to actually try? No, you just have to have an IQ above 80 and go, yeah. Man, no question, I would totally risk my truck to drive over a railroad tie. I think those railroad ties, in fact, loaded properly, could probably support the weight of a train. Yeah, see, you don't actually have to go die to know that the little skinny pipe ain't gonna work. Dude, it ain't gonna work, okay? I watched 200 people die. I don't have to die to say it ain't gonna work. I'm gonna take the 200 dead people for it. Okay, I'm a little bit stupid because I almost died four times testing those death traps and it almost killed me four times. So I have almost died four different times just trying to test those pieces of crap. They're so deadly, I was just completely shocked anyone would actually sell that and put it on the market, let alone push them to ignorant newbies and tell them that it's actually more stable. Dude, the little skinny pipe's more stable. It's new technology filled with cloth and string and air. Okay, are we done here? Are we done with the hoax flex debate? This is really insane. Why does a pilot of my skill level have to come and explain why the little pipe isn't gonna support the weight of the big pipe. Why? Why shouldn't, I mean, I should be spending my time explaining the differences between this good certified beginner class glider and this good certified class beginner glider that's safe. It should be like safe glider versus safe glider wars. Hey, let's compare and then we'll compare actual characteristics. See, the cool thing is, is glider characteristics are totally measurable. There's no opinion. People tell me all day, I don't know who to believe. This guy says this and this guy. Dude, glider characteristics are measurable. Just look for the facts, look for the evidence. It's this, it's this, you compare side by side, blah, blah, blah. like the Dominator, I put side by side with one of the hoax flex death traps. 29 square meter dudek versus a 16 square meter Dominator. And the 29 square meter dudek sank away higher sink rate than the 16 square meter dominator. Dominator is very efficient. But glider characteristics like that are easily measurable. 
You don't have to feel like it's so difficult. Just take the facts one at a time because the truth makes perfectly logical sense and there should be lots of evidence to back it up. And someone lying should be really easy to catch because you can go, bull crap, and here's a video that proves why. So just come on. If you have an IQ below 80, don't fly. All right, if you have an IQ below 100, don't fly. This sport's not for you. <laughs> Aviation is not for people that are of, you know, limited intelligence or even average intelligence. For people that are just a little bit sharper, a little bit brighter than the average stump. So, this is very simple stuff. Listen, learn, use your head, do some logic. Don't just listen to what some punk freaking lion kid tells you that, yeah, you're going to drive your truck across this little pipe as though you actually have to try that to see if it's going to work. Dude, let's go flying and just use the good quality, safe, certified gear and not fly death drops. And then I don't have to post a video of you dying and go, look, this is what happens to the guys who didn't listen to the advice of the guy who has, you know, <laughs> a little bit of knowledge and experience in the sport. There you go, let's go fly, let's be safe, let's have fun, and stand up for what's right. Tell the truth. Once you understand the truth, and you realize just how horriflingly freaking messed up these people are, just flat out lying and murdering and killing people, say something. Yeah, say something, speak up, tell the truth. Because the guy with real honor is not the guy that wants to just get along with everybody and not ruffle any feathers. The true guy with character is the guy that stands up for what's truth and doesn't give a crap if the entire world is wrong. <laughs> if the truth is the truth, they're going to just stand up for the truth. And these lying trash talkers, they will all get together and tell every lie and they'll bash trash and make up all this trash. But it's still trash. The little skinny pipe just isn't going to support weight like the big fat pipe. It's that simple.